Switzerland built their reputation on secrets locked away in banks. They built watches with precision and created a tool so versatile that it became an icon. But now the Swiss have flipped the script and they are launching a new AI platform that is open source, free, and built for the world. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the AI for everyone daily brief. Our video is gonna be very casual tonight, but this is a good one. Uh, because this month, September 2025, uh, Switzerland unveiled Apertus. Now, if you're not familiar with that word, it's a Latin word that means simply open. So they've created a large language model that was created by, and I've got to get all this out there, EPFL, ETH Zurich, and the Swiss National Supercomputing Center. So that's a mouthful, uh, but pretty cool here. So they're doing what OpenAI was supposed to do as a nonprofit, be an open source. Uh, Switzerland is actually doing it. And unlike most models from all the big tech companies here in America, Apertus is just that, completely open. The architecture, the training data, the checkpoints, the documentation, all of it is public. There are two versions available, and this might be a little bit too techy for some people, but I still think it's very interesting when you really start going deeper in this stuff. They have an 8 billion parameter model and a 70 billion parameter version. Now, why I think that's so cool is, can you fathom 70 billion of anything? Like, that's just an insane number. And, and get this, because it gets even crazier. Both were trained on roughly 15 trillion tokens across more than 1,000 languages. Let me say that again. It was trained on 15 trillion tokens. My mind is blown at 70 billion. Now we're looking at 15 trillion. And 1,000 languages. I think that's important. So about 40% of the data set is non-English, 40% covering even minority Swiss languages here, like, and I've never heard of this one, but Rom Romanish and Swiss German. So there's maybe dialects or something in there. Uh, the model is free to access, totally free. It can be downloaded on Hugging Face. Right now, it's tested through Swisscom's AI platform, and it was built with compliance in mind because, you know, the European Union has a lot of different standards right now that those of us in the United States do not have. I'm assuming the Swiss have some of their own standards. I didn't go that deep into the story, uh, but it is filtering out personal data to make sure that they're in alignment with all of those standards that are in place. All right, I had to move. We're getting my dogs all riled up. So there's there's Oakland, typically always asleep. Charlie, say hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie, our Bernie's Mountain Dog. And there's our Golden Mountain Dog. Always happy, tail always wagging, having a good time. But uh, so why it matters? Well, this might not shift anything in the U.S. market today, but it does tell us where some of the governments are going because it's going to be a lot more than just regulating AI. They're actually going to be creating the AI. So I don't know if that's a good thing yet or a bad thing, but time will tell. Uh, Apertus does show what happens when public institutions treat AI like infrastructure. Really kind of no different than roads, than the internet, then, you know, how everything here works because AI is going to impact every single human being. So I do think it's kind of important to look at it more as infrastructure. Uh, it needs to be open. I, I think it needs more transparency as everything moves forward. Uh, and it's got to be built to serve local needs. Maybe what people in Switzerland need is going to be different than what I need sitting in the middle of Indiana. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, the emphasis on transparency and multilingual is very, very important. And U.S. commercial models really are basically focused 
on English. I mean, I am seeing more languages come up with certain things, but we are absolutely English first. I mean, there's no question there. And I think given the current administration in the United States, it's probably going to, it's probably a safe bet that it's going to stay like that, at least for the near future. But look, when we look to Switzerland, when we look at this Apertus, uh, just think of it as a test case and let's pay close attention to this. Let's see how much traction it gains, how good this AI might become uh, and see if other countries do follow suit with this. Are they just going to fall in line with the big tech folks like OpenAI, are they going to continue down the path of creating their own platforms? And this could eventually influence U.S. companies or at least how U.S. companies bring AI to the market, how they compete abroad when governments are going to have their own open source systems, and what policymakers are going to think about kind of creating this more nationalized AI strategy. So all things that we absolutely need to pay attention to. How it impacts you. Well, for US leaders, the immediate impact might be very, very subtle here, but the lessons are clear. So number one, transparency is a differentiator. Customers, regulators, they're going to demand that the AI is auditable auditable. Like I'm struggling tonight a little bit. Apertus is, is going to show that it can be delivered. Now, you think that at least what I see in America is bad with the division and the potential for, you know, they always talk about civil war, whatever's going on here, this crazy time that we're in. Just wait 24 months from today when AI is starting to really have a major impact on jobs, on deals, on corporations, on your everyday life. Because as I record this, Google Chrome just came out with AI being fully integrated now into their browser. So it's just going to keep creeping into everything that you do. And when things go south, and they will with certain things, right? Some bad things are going to happen as this grand experiment continues. People are going to demand transparency. They're going to demand it. And things could get very ugly as things move forward. But like with anything moving this quickly, that is to be very expected. Uh, number two, sovereignty is rising. Nations are crafting these local AI ecosystems, and it could challenge U.S. dominance in global markets. Now, we are in a war with the rest of the world because at the end of the day, whoever wins with AI wins the world. <laughs> so we, we really have to, to take that into account. Uh, and number three, niche markets matter. Really being able to cater to minority communities and maybe some of these languages that don't get a lot of love in tech or i mean there's mil there's like so many languages like if you really start diving deep down that hole it's kind of shocking how many languages there are still in the world and if you think about it if you're one of those minority communities that speak a language that really doesn't get a lot of service you're getting left behind and getting left behind very quickly and i don't know about you but i don't want anybody to get left behind as things move forward so i think that's that's pretty good. So the key takeaways here, Switzerland released this Apertus. I do recommend go read some articles on it, do some research on it. It's a fully open model. If you are a tech person, you can go to Hugging Face, download this, do your thing with it. 15 trillion tokens. I think that's what blows me away the most. And 40% non-English coverage across a thousand languages. A thousand languages. Um, and lastly, the impact on the U.S. is going to be limited. Uh, like, U.S. probably won't even hardly pay attention to this. But it does shift. It, it does show a global shift uh, towards a public AI infrastructure. And that's something that I'm absolutely going to be paying a lot of attention to. Oh, and one more thing. Come here, come here. <laughs> that might be too close. Sorry. <laughs> but innovation often starts at the edges. Switzerland's Apertus might seem distant, but it's open, local, and transparent approach could completely redefine AI's future.
Will the U.S. embrace this model, or is the rest of the world going to outpace us? What's your take? Do you think the U.S. could build a complete open source model that is infrastructure for every single citizen of the United States? Or will we continue to lean on those large tech giants? I would love to hear from you in the comments section. And with that, our time has come to an end. Well, if you found value in this video, please hit that subscribe button, like button, bell notification button. It's the best way to support this channel and get the information in front of as many people as possible because we don't want anybody, and I mean we don't want anybody to get left behind. Well, that's it for me today. My name is Harrison Painter. This has been your AI for Everyone Daily Brief. And until next time, keep creating, keep innovating, and most importantly, keep up. God bless you. Thanks for listening. I'm glad you stayed. One more spark for the plans you've made. If this show hit, go share the vibe. Like, subscribe, let's build.